हेलो एवरी वन होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग वेल सो टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डू टॉपिक फोर ऑफ पेपर टू दैट इज लॉज ऑफ हेरिडिटी लॉज ऑफ हेरिडिटी सो लॉज ऑफ हेरिडिटी दीज आर ऑल्सो नॉन एज मेंडल्स लॉ ऑफ इनहेरिटेंस Mendel's laws of inheritance. So the first law is law of dominance. Law of dominance. So according to this, the hybrid of his creed or hybrid of his springs only inherit the dominant trait. Hybrid of his springs. only inherit dominant trait that is only so dominant trait in the phenotype dominant trait on phenotype and the alleles suppressed are called recessive well the alleles the trait which have not been seen dominant trait we what we can see but the alleles that are separate suppressed alleles are called suppressed alleles are called recessive traits while the alleles that uh, determine the trait are known as dominant trait so while a cross while there is a cross the character which we can see is the dominant trait the alleles which we can see alleles which we will see is dominant trait and the suppressed characters are known as recessive traits so this is the law of dominance that the dominant trait will be seen from us and the second law is law of segregation law of first law is the law of dominance and the second law is law of segregation so it states that allele pair separates allele pairs separates or segregates separates or segregates during gamete formation during during gamete formation and randomly unite at fertilization so here we can see that allele pairs separates or segregates during gamete formation and they randomly unite at fertilization so there are four concepts of this principle or this law that is first one is that a gene can exist in more than one form of alleles gene can exist in more than one form of alleles organism inherit two allele for each trait organism inherit two allele for each trait and when sex cells are produced by meiosis when you all know that sex cells are produced by meiosis when sex cells are produced by meiosis allele pair separates leaving each cell with a single allele for each trait separates leaving each cell each cell with single allele for each trait single allele for each trait and the fourth principle concept is that when the two alleles of a pair are different one is dominant and one is recessive when there are two different alleles one is dominant and one is recessive so these are the four important uh, concepts for example you can see that when we cross 
suppose the parent in the parent generation when we cross red that is rr it is dominant into white what is recessive rr so we get r in this r and after the cross we get rr so here r is dominant that is we will see the red only red in the f1 generation first filial generation first filial generation so these are is separated where these are is shown uh, these are separated not separated so this is what recessive is this is what dominant is so this was the second law that is law of segregation now moving to third law which is law of independent assortment third law is independent in the assortment so it states that alleles of different genes states that alleles of different genes are inherited independently are inherited independently within the organism that reproduce sexually within organism that is reproducing sexually an independent assortment take place during the process of meiosis in this process chromosomes are halved and the chromosomes in this process are chromosomes are halved and hence they are called known as haploid we see from 2n the chromosomes here become n and these are called haploids for example suppose there are uh, two varieties with round uh, suppose two varieties with dominant one first one is with round and yellow seeds and the second variety is of with round and green seeds this is round and yellow seeds and this is sorry this is wrinkled and green seeds so when we cross this we get rr yy in f1 generation so the gametes here are ry 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 so let us understand this making a table So this was the F1 generation. Um, let us study the making table in F2 generation. What happens in F2 generations? Here we have R Y, R Y, R Y. This will be capital Y, R Y, and R Y. Same we got here also. R Y, R Y, R Y, R Y. So what we get here? First one is R R Y Y. Second one is R R Y and small Y. Third one is R R Y Y. Fourth one is R R Y Y. Now uh, do this with this. So we get R R small Y capital Y capital Y small Y. Then we got R R both is small Y. Then we got R R y y here we got r r and y y and now crossing with this two here we get r r y y then we get r r y y one capital y one small y then we get so r r y y then we get r for the capital here will be then we get r r y y moving on to the fourth crossing this one 
we get r r y y we get r r both is small y y we get r r y y and lastly r r y y so when you uh, count or when you divide these so we got the phenotypic ratio of the phenotypic ratio here will be 9 ratio 3 ratio 3 ratio 1 so these 9 will be round and yellow suppose this is round and yellow 1 round and yellow 2 round and yellow 3 round and yellow 4 now moving on round and yellow 5 round and yellow 6 round and yellow 7 round and yellow 8 and round and yellow 9 so we get 9 round and yellows and 3 round and green see round and green round and green and round and green 3 round and green and then we get 3 wrinkled and yellow wrinkled yellow wrinkled yellow wrinkled yellow and 1 we get wrinkled green that is this so the phenotypic ratio what we get each 9 ratio 3 ratio 3 ratio 1 and when we go to genotypic ratio so for, for this 9 we got 1 ratio 2 ratio 2 ratio 4 how we will see here 1 this one is 1 2 that is 1 and its second will be both capital C 2 1 ratio 2 and then we get more 2 of this RRYY and RR capital Y oh, sorry this RR YY and both capital no see RRYY so we get to this and 4 of this one mix one mix ones so four we get there and when we divide this three we get one ratio two then again we get one ratio two ratio one this one is last one one so when you divide this way so you get this one is the genotypic ratio and this one is the phenotypic ratio hope you all understand this so what do we get to see here that they segregate independently producing four types of gametes here we see that they segregated independently producing one two three four four types of gametes so this is what law of independent assortment is so i hope you all understand this this was the f2 generation and when we get we produce this in f1 generation So I hope you understand this table, its calculations. Now moving on, one question I was asked in previous years that is quantitative, quantitative traits shows continuous variation y. Quantitative traits shows continuous variations continuous variations why so first of all we should know what quantitative trait is so quantitative traits are those that shows continuous variation and which can be measured easily the variations in these quantitative traits can be measured easily because they are metric traits controlled by polygens they are controlled by polygens such as yield plant height etc so why they show continuous variations so reasons for continuous variations in quantitative traits the first factor is due to environmental effect environmental effect 
सो एनवायरमेंट विल प्रोड्यूस ए कंटिन्यूस डिस्टर्बेंस इवन इन ट्रेड इज गवर्न बाय सिंगल जीन सो वी ऑल नो इन पॉली जीन्स ट्रेड इज गवर्न बाय मोर देन वन जीन्स सो ड्यू टू इन्वायरमेंट इवन इन्वायरमेंट कैन सो डिस्टर्बेंस इन वेन दे आर गवर्न बाय सिंगल जीन हियर दे आर पॉली जीन्स तो इजली इन्वायरमेंट कैन सो वेरिएशन so we see that the factor of environmentally determined variation is 10 to 15% while in some cases is it even more than 50% that is the more than 50% of variation is only due to the environment and that is mainly due to biotic and abiotic stresses so due to biotic and abiotic stresses the organism starts showing variation due to environment and it ranges basically it ranges from 10 to 50% but in some species it is even more than 50% now the second reason is that number of gene with small cumulative effect so what happens in single gene there is one gene with uh, all the cumulative effects but in polygenes there are number of genes many genes and many genes each genes have little 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 effect so there are number of genes with small cumulative effects as they are controlled by polygenes so as the number of genes governing the trait increases the phenotypic classes in the trait also increases as the number of genes increases phenotypic classes also increases phenotypic classes also increases suppose there are 12 genes uh, affecting a trait if 12 genes are affecting a trait there ha- uh, there has more it then there has more than 25 different phenotypic classes so more the genes more the phenotypic con- uh, classes and hence more variation so i hope you understand this so this was all for today's session i hope you made notes i say in every session that the notes you are going to make is your brahmas most of the questions will be directly from your notes so keep making notes keep value adding to your notes it will help help for any queries do comment if you like it please press the like button do subscribe and share that's all for today have a nice day thank you